Welcome to another video with Mr. Long. In this series on learning how to program, we are looking at the types of errors that you will come across. We try to prevent errors in our in our programs, but you will come across some eventually. And the best way to of, to fix them is to know the different types. So this is a way to identify them, and hopefully you can be able to fix them. So the first error we're going to look at is the syntax error. Now you might recognize the word syntax. Now syntax refers to a language's spelling, its grammar, and its punctuation. Basically the rules of that language. And we know that Delphi is a programming language, or any programming language it has its own particular rules about how, it's, how it works. It's not just Delphi. Every language has its own rules. Every programming language has its own syntax and when you violate those rules when you don't do things according to that particular syntax rule um, then you get a syntax error where you break the rules of the programming language now it's very easy for us to try and interpret uh, when someone breaks the rules in English for example you can try to interpret it but a computer can't do that we need to follow those rules exactly and so the program will not run or compile if you get a syntax error. You get a whole bunch of messages saying these are the errors in the program. So let's go look at a few examples. Here I've got a program, so I'm just going to run it. I've intentionally created some errors in the code. So let's see what it looks like when it runs. So it's trying to run it. Hey, there are some errors and we can click OK. And what's nice about syntax errors is it tries to identify where those errors are. So it puts a nice little red line that says, hey, there's a problem over here. So it says there a colon equal to expected, but a colon or equal to found. Ah, we didn't use the assigned symbol correctly. So there's a missing. So sometimes it's very easy to fix because it tells you exactly what the mistake is. Sometimes it does require a bit of interpretation. So we've solved that one and you just run it again and see if you can minimize some of the errors. Are oh, we getting there? says that it does not undeclared identify it does not recognize edit number now if you look at your your components you see you do not have one so if you refer to something that doesn't exist a variable or a component with the wrong name then obviously it's going to pick that up and say, i don't know who this is so you can obviously go there and say oh, that it must be edt number and not edrt so let's run it again there are some more errors over here, um, it says incompatible types, integer and extended. So I think it's referring to that line over there. So it says there integer and extend. Extend is another name for like a decimal number and they are incompatible. That means you're trying to put a particular type of value into a value that doesn't fit. So we are, tr that is trying to put a value inside of AVG, which is an integer. And obviously it says this must be, you're trying to put integers or of extended into an integer there that's what it's trying to say so obviously avg should probably be a real and as you learned from our previous videos if the moment you divide you know the answer must be real so i do so sometimes the error isn't necessarily over here it might be further up in your code but, but you can figure it out as you go along there it says missing operator or semicolon okay now normally when you see missing operator or semicolon it's normally the line above it because there is a semicolon there are oh, there's no semicolon there so let's replace the semicolon we're nearly there i think uh does doesn't understand mr it says undeclared identifier it means it thinks it's a component or a variable no i want it just like it is that text ah oh, we must put single quotes around that string okay and then i think we're near the end here ah Cannot process too many actual parameters. So yeah, we are trying to put AVG, which we knew in advance was going to be a real. And I'm saying float to store. First of all, there it says there, doesn't recognize dot text. That's also, see it unlines it. A label doesn't have a text property. A label has a caption property. You can see if I say dot text, there's nothing that comes up. But if I say dot caption, there we go. That's a bit better. And here, not enough actual parameters. I can see it straight away. It says float to string, not enough actual parameters, or it's something, or too many actual parameters. It means we're giving float to string too many parameters. But I want to use that that FFX. Ah, oh, that's flo that's not float to string, that's float to string F. So over here we're going to type float to string F, and that will fix the too many parameters. Hopefully, so let's run it. And if your program compiles or or, cre or opens up and runs, then you know that you've solved all of the syntax errors oh there we go there it pops up so there we go so i don't think it does anything it's not a very good program but just to show you syntax errors 
Now the next error we're going to look at is a logical error. Now a logical error, the program will run and compile. So it won't tell you that there's a logical error. The problem is the results will not be correct. They won't be what you expect them to be. You will test it with data that you know works. And then when you get the results, you go, hey, these aren't the right results. And then the key to this is that you obviously given it the wrong instructions or the code that you've given it is incorrect. So your logic in your code is incorrect. So now we might think like how the computer must do, must do what we want it to do. No, the computers don't do what we want them to do. They do what we tell them to do. So if you tell them to do the wrong thing, they will do the wrong thing. So the key here is to always tell them to do the right thing. So that's where logical errors come. So remember, computers don't do what you want them to do. They do what you tell them to do. So let's go have a look at an example of a logical error. Now the key to logical errors is to obviously understand what you want your program to do. So yeah, I've got a program where you get three marks and we want to find the average of the three marks. So you add them together, divide them by three. Um, so if you give 50, 60, 70, the average of that should be 60. So let's run it and see what happens. So we run it. And as we said, logical errors, the program runs. And if I click on it, it doesn't do anything. Okay, so let's go find out. So if we click on here, what was wrong with our logic? Well, we did the input, we did the process, but we didn't display it. So that's obviously a logical problem. So in that label, I think it was label result or label average, that one dot caption, dot caption, Mr. Long. We are going to put the R average variable, but we're going to convert it from a float to a string. I think I might have, there we go. And there we go. So now I've got that particular problem solved. Now when I click on it, we know the result should be 60. Um, that's definitely not 60. So let's go have a look. Well, uh, if you look at our input, we got mark one, we got from the first edit or spin edit, mark two from the second spin edit, but mark three, we got from the first edit again. No, we want all three marks. And this last one is spin edit mark three. So there's a mistake there. So that should be three you see this these are quite difficult to solve because you have to figure out what your code is because it's working it's not going to tell you but you must find out the logic or the error in your logic and then this one if i click on there and we see oh that average is still not 60. well let's look at my calculation well my calculation is doing add three marks and divide by three ah but bodmas says it's actually only going to divide the last mark by three and then add these two which is not what i want i first want to add the three marks so by putting brackets in we solve the logic in our calculation because remember delphi does follow bodmas rules and there we go that looks a little bit more respectful than that so we've solved our logical errors so as I said, those ones are quite tricky because the program will run, but you have to go through your logic and try to find out where the little mistakes are. And the final error that we're going to discuss today is a runtime error. Now, again, with runtime errors, the program will run and compile, which is not great because it doesn't tell us that there's a mistake. However, the program will crash and that will either be because the program did something wrong or the user did something wrong so the program will actually crash or not function um, if you get some sometimes your program will get to the point where it actually like hangs and you can't do anything um, then you can press Control f2 to reset the program to get it back to to test the code a bit again so you just remember that if it ever freezes on you Control f2 so here we go let's test out some runtime errors we're going to do some ones where the program causes the error and where we cause the error so if i click on runtime it goes a hey, floating point division by zero that means we are trying to divide by zero somewhere so if we look at our code over here you'll see that we have a variable called other called which is zero and at some point it's going to divide by that zero so there's no problem with our syntax however that value shouldn't be a zero Maybe the user is going to input a value and you must prevent them from entering a zero if you're going to be dividing by that number. Um, let's go have a look at another example of a, of a runtime error. Let's say that obviously we want to take the input and convert it from a string to end. But what happens if they type in like the, they type in text like that? That will also cause a problem to your program and the rest of it won't run. Later on when we do loops, you'll learn about infinite loops, which is also a type of runtime error where you stop, the program stops working. So if it doesn't work, then you can, or if, if that button's available, you can press that to stop it, or you can click run and you can go program reset, or as you see, control F2, if your program does hang and you can't go anywhere, and that will bring you back to the code. 
To learn more coding, go to our YouTube channel. Click on that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment. We'd love for you to support the channel. Go look at the playlist to find out more topics that can interest you on programming. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long way.